So I want you to do an animation like this. I hope you can't see my screen. Okay, for this uh, discussion, I want you to make an output like this. I hope you could see my screen clearly. So I want you to do the animation like this. Have you seen this? Okay, so I want you to do the animation like this. We're in the ball, the ball will be rolling. Okay, like this. So from the first, uh, from the first um, practice that we made last time, which is the modeling of the ball, I'm assuming that all of you finished the ball by this time. By the way, the ball is which practice? The ball is practice number two, I guess, right? Am I correct on that? The ball is practice two. So we are now on practice five. So I am assuming that you finished the ball already as we go with this discussion. Because without this ball, you won't be able to do the next uh, practical. Okay, so we will be doing this animation. But before that, let me explain to you the concept first of how do we animate the ball. Okay. So basically, we have, um, let me just close that animation, the one I did. Let me close this animation. Let me go with the whiteboard. So what we'll be doing is we have to animate an object, which is uh, a ball, basically, the one we did last time. So we have a line like this. So we have two points, right? So we want a ball. So we want to roll the ball. I'm just draw a ball. Control set. Why it's not uh, snapping to shape? Control Z. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So I have a ball like this. So I want this ball to move from this point. I cannot move it. I want this ball to move from this point up to this point. From A, okay, I want to move it to B. Okay. So there is a mathematical formula, okay, so basically. In order for this ball to, to go here, right? In order for this ball to go here, it has to rotate, right? So it has to do rotation. For this ball to go to this place, it has to rotate, correct? So it has to rotate. So from this point, rotation should be done. So the ball should keep on rotating in order for it to reach the other points. So the question is, how do we rotate it? So how do we rotate it? So it means that, it means that rotation, the number of rotation, according to the formula written by some mathematician here, I won't uh, discuss you the, the formula, okay? It will be a long one. It is, it is distance divided by the radius. So this is the formula. So rotation, but the unit of this, rotation in radians, okay, radians, not in degrees, okay, in radians is equal to distance over radius, okay? So distance over radius, we know distance, right? So if this is, let's say for example, if this is 10 meters, okay, the, the distance is 10 meters, let's say for example, from this point is 10 meters, okay? Meaning, the number this, the number 
of rotation this circle has to make is based on the radius here. So the distance between this point up to this point is what we call the radius. It means that in order for this ball, I mean this uh, circle to rotate, okay, and to reach point B, from point A to point B, we have to rotate it. So the rotation is taken from this formula, rotation in radians, sorry, my spelling is not correct, not radians, it's radians, sorry, sorry, okay, not radians, this is radians, okay, sorry for the spelling. So in order for this ball to rotate, we have to follow the formula rotation in radians equals distance divided by the radius. So it means we have to rotate it, we have to rotate it uh, many times from point A to point B. So the number of rotation of this circle would be equal to distance, this distance divided by the number of the number of um, radius here, distance of the radius. So to demonstrate that to you, let me show to you some clips I got from the internet. It's really difficult to demonstrate this to you by simply talking. So like this. Have you seen this uh, clip here? That one, okay? So this rotation, okay? It means that in this example, for this ball to reach this point to this point, it has to rotate three times, correct? It has to rotate three times. So further, for you to see it, this is a demonstration, okay? The number of rotation will be dependent on the radius here. So this is how we do the demonstration here. So this is how we derive the formula for um, for reaching point A to point B. So this is the um, idea on how we do the rotation of the ball. Okay, so please remember that formula. It's very ball rotation. Okay, this is very uh, important for you to, to do. Okay, anyways, I will be going back with that as we go with the, with the discussion in the um, in the, um, in the blender, as we go with the blender, we will go back with, with this. Okay? So going to your blender, I want you to open your old project, which is ball. This one, do you remember it, right? Okay, so going back with this. So I have loaded the ball, the last exercise we did last time. Okay? So, I want to rotate this from that point, from this point of the, let me go with zero. Okay, from the camera view. But before that, from edit mode, you have to go with object mode. Okay, so go to zero. Why I cannot uh, do this? Go to zero. And then let's try to save this project. Let me save this project as save, save us. Let me go to desktop and let, let me call it uh, rotating ball, okay? Rotating ball, rotating ball. Then save it. So I have to be able to save it here, okay? Okay. Okay, so let me scale the ball. So let's try to scale the ball into zero. Press S and then go to the properties. Let me just skip it. Go to plus. It's better to go here. So let's try to scale the ball into one. Go with the scale here. Let me go with one. One. This one, one also. This one, also one. Okay, so let's scale. 
So that's the first thing you have to do. Scale the ball. Let me just write the steps. This is practice five, right? Rolling a ball. Okay, so the next one we have to um, do is we have to scale the ball, scale the ball, okay, by changing the x, y, z scale values to 1, okay. So you can go with this using the object using the object property palette scale the ball okay by changing the XYZ value Okay, X, Y, Z value to one, like what we like we did. That's the one I told you earlier. So before you do the scaling, you can go with this. Okay, so go with um, if you're not here, you could click this one and then go to this one, the transform properties, and then go to scale. Okay, then change it the scale value of x, y, z to 1 .0, 1 .0, 1 .0, 1 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0. So the one I mentioned earlier, we just have to change the scaling from this palette, x, y, z, and change it to 1, okay? So the x and the y and the z will be 1, 1, 1, 1, okay? So since we scale this, you will see in Blender we have the dimension of x, y, z, which is roughly around 1.97, right? So this is your radius now. So you will see your dimension, I mean the dimension of this. If I'm going to draw this, this circle, okay? So in Blender, the dimension of this circle is like this. Let me just uh, draw it to you so that you will get it. Let me just show the dimension. Uh -huh.
Okay, so when we go with the blender, if you will see this ball has this, right? So it has the X. It has the X. This is the X. This is the Y. It has the Z, right? So we call this, we, we have the dimensions now. Okay? So it, if you will see, if we're going to um, dissect this circle, it has this equidistant. This is one, right? According to our blender, we, we, we made it one. So by observation, our radius now here, our radius R is actually equal to one. Okay? Because the dimension. Okay? So when we scale it. So the dimension now will be equal to one. So the value of the radius can be predicted or can be guessed or estimated using the dimension properties of Blender here. So roughly our dimension is around, um, the radius is around 1. Okay, around 1. Why? Because here, because if you're going to um, draw it properly, this is actually equal to 2. We call it the the diameter, right? So same here. It should be like this. Okay. So since we're only using the um, the radius, so we will get, we will have it one, because if you remember your math class, the diameter is equal to two times the radius, right? So it means half of the diameter is equivalent to the to the radius. So this one is one point something according to the computation here. So half of that will be roughly around one. So we could we could we could we could um, guess or we could conclude safely that in our blender our radius is equivalent to one because half of this is roughly around one. But you could you could use the the exact value. It's all up to you. Okay, no problem for that. But for the sake of the computation, we'll be using one. But this is actually roughly, uh, if, if I'm going to use the calculator here, the radius here should be something like, uh, this is 1.97456 divided by 2, you will get around 0 0.98. So this is roughly around 1. To round it off, it should be around something, the value is around 1. It's fine. Okay, so the next step is, since our ball is like this, uh, you want to see the rolling, right? So if, if it will be rolling, I won't, I won't notice it, so I have to rotate the ball. Okay, so the second, the third step would be uh, rotate the ball. You have to rotate the ball. Okay, based on the x-axis. Okay based on the x-axis so you can do this press you can do this one by pressing press R plus X at the same time so that you could rotate it in the x-axis okay make note of this when you do the rotating note let me put a note in here note when you do the rotating the rotation it you are in the object mode okay or else your or else your object will be distorted okay or else object will be distorted so please make note of this okay so you want to uh, rotate the ball in the x-axis so I'll just press let me just go with zero so this is my Zero. I cannot see. Oh, this is my camera now. Good. Escape it. So zero again. Save it. File save. Because I, I always love using the camera view. If you notice, I keep on using it, right? Because uh, this is safe. This is safe for me to uh, know the positioning of my, of my object. So let's rotate the ball by pressing R and then X at the same time. So when I do the rotation, it will give me this look. Okay, so I'll rotate on the x-axis. Okay, so I want to do this way. Escape, let me repeat. Press R, and then X. You will see the handle, it will be rotating on the X. Then move the mouse, don't click anywhere, just move the mouse until the stripes of this ball will be 
on this okay yeah on this align with the x axis okay you want to align this this ball in this way okay so if you want you can do perfectly like this it's fine okay okay let me let me repeat okay press r press r and then x okay so control z escape r and then x you will see it like this right and then just move the mouse don't click anywhere just move the mouse until this line if you will see this line right will be exactly on this line here which is the x okay you can move it like this or you can do until this this green portion of my ball will be equal to that axis manually do it so that you could see like this so for the sake of those who have the same ball as like me you can actually do the rotation here go here on this top and then change it to 90 it's fine but for those who don't have the same model uh, as me you can go with R and then go with X and then rotate it manually like this okay until this green aligns with the line here okay then click to release it so it should be something like this so your ball would be something like uh, this okay so we are done with the preparation so always save your work so that nobody will cry later on save your work so that nobody will cry later on okay because if you lose your job then you will be crying so let me just close this for the means ah i will need it later no problem so the next uh, portion of the steps let's go with this let's now go with the part one so part one will be keyframing setting the keyframes uh -huh. you should remember the last topic is very important setting the keyframes of the ball okay so save it you know how to do this uh, the keyframing right correct you know the keyframing correct If you forgot your key framing, that's a big problem. That's that's our last topic, correct? So please don't forget it. Key framing is very important. So don't forget the key framing. It's very important. So in this case, we have to review the key framing for those who forgot it or you, who are absent last meeting. You have to know what's key framing all about, or else this is a big problem for you. So our concern is we have to set the X position of this ball. We have to put it somewhere there, okay, on this area. We want to put the ball in this area. Then we want to move it to here, okay? So to here. So what we will do is go to the step. Let me just write the step here. So set the X position, again, maybe using the palette, the property palette. okay set the X position of the ball to minus 10 okay in the timeline in the timeline right click 0 okay then then go back to the property palette right click right click and select insert keyframe you know this one right we did it last time so let me just go to blender again let me just change the ball position to negative 10 minus 10 so it will be moving there have you noticed it moved when i change the x to 10 it will be moving there okay so this is the x this is the y so minus 10 
And then from the timeline, I have to right click this timeline, or if you want, you can type somewhere here in this one. Just type the value, let's say for example 20, it will go in the 20, okay, if you, if you will do. Okay, if you'll type 20, then it will move to 20. Just for now, just go with zero, enter key, right click it, and then go to the palette again here, right click, then go to insert keyframe. So it will create a keyframe for the ball. Okay? The next, the next we have to, this is the start position, right? So we're going to go for the start position. So using the property palette, set the start position. Let me just, uh, okay, set the start position. Let me just write in here so that everything is complete. Start position. Okay? Next, step two, we're going to set the end position of the ball. Same step using the property palette set the X position of the ball to let's say for example um, 4 okay to 4 okay so same thing in the timeline, okay, select, select the 240. It's all up to you if you want to change, okay, the timeline, it's all up to you. So the timeline will dictate how fast the rolling of the ball. If you want, if you want, uh, if you want the ball to be fast, to be rolling faster, Okay, if you want the ball to be rolling faster, then change the time, the value in the timeline. The value in the timeline with, with a smaller value, okay? But for now, for the exercise, you will just have to use 240, okay? So go back to property palette. And then right click, right click, and select insert keyframe. Okay. So let me go with this. Let me go with the timeline. Let's say 240, right, as per the example here. So what happened here in my timeline? So let's go with 240, okay? So this is 240, okay? And then in my 240, let me just change the value of the ball. Let me just put it to uh, four, X is four, okay? And then let me just uh, insert a keyframe here, okay? So go back, so this is the positioning now. If I run the animation, it will be like this, okay? So I can see now where the ball will be coming from and where the ball is heading into, okay? But the rolling portion was not yet applied, only the movements, okay? So applying the formula, you have to remember, okay? The ball, we set the X position of the ball, if you remember it. Let me just draw again another one here for the illustration, it's a dimension. So for the ball, let me just draw again. It's not recognized. Uh -huh. Why is it difficult to draw a ball?
Okay. So the position of the ball, if you remember, we set it in the timeline as, so this is what? Minus 10, right? So x here equals minus 10. And we set the end point to be x equals to 4, right? So what's the distance now? Distance is? What's the distance? 14. 14. Okay. So the distance will be 14. Minus 10 here, meaning if you have 0 here, this is 0. Okay. If this is 0, then we have 14. Distance is 14. So please remember this. Okay. So since we have the distance already, okay, the values that we have, we can now calculate. So we can now calculate the um, rotation calculation, number of rotation calculation. Okay. So we'll be doing the calculation. How about the radius? If you remember, the radius, how much? One. One. Yeah, right. So as per the formula, so using the formula, using the formula of rotation, number of rotation in radians, okay, equals distance over radius, right? Okay, so we'll be using this formula. Okay, so we will get how much? Rotation equals equals 14 divided by 1. Okay, so what happens next? We can now conclude that the number of rotation the ball has to make in radians should be 14. It has to do 14 rotation to reach this distance. Okay, it has to roll 14 times. Meaning this ball, this ball has to turn, okay? The ball has to rotate 14 times to reach the distance of 11. Okay, so please make note of that. So let's now go with the next part of the animation, which is the rotation. Let me write the steps here. This is part two, part two, rotation. So how do we do it? Let me just uh, change this one. It should be continue numbering for Let's go with six. Okay, so with the step six, what shall we do? Go to sin. Okay, go to the sin in the right palette. Okay, in the right palette, just uh, below the screen. Explorer, okay, Explorer, okay, just below, why am I doing double, below this Scene Explorer, okay, let me just save it. Go here, it says on the right side of the palette, near the scene, go to the, you go to the scene explorer, below it, go to scene, so this is a render, this is render layers, this is scene, right, the third, this one, this one here, so click it. Okay, after that, step seven, change units 
of the angle into radians, okay? Because you have to remember, the um, rotation is in radians, not in angle, not in degrees, okay? Of the angles into radians, okay? Because if you will see here, our rotation is what? It's in degrees, have you noticed? Right? It's in degrees. So we want it to be in radians because the formula is telling rotation in radians equals the distance divided by the radius. So we have to change the angle, this, from degrees to radians. So we have to change. So you will see now rotation will change here, okay? Not from degrees into radians now, it will change. So let me just add something to the note. Change units of the angle from degrees to radians, okay? So it's very important. So keep it from degrees to radians. Just click, go with the radians, and it's fine. It's set already. You will see in the rotation now, degrees was removed. The symbol degrees here was removed. Instead, it is now changed into radians, okay? So using the formula, using the formula that we have done earlier, okay, let me just write the steps. Using the formula number of rotation, or just simply rotations, rotations in radians, let me emphasize this, equals distance divided by radius. Okay, calculate. Okay, calculate the value for the y rotation. Calculate the value for the y rotation. Why we have to rotate in y axis, not, not on the x or z? Why we are rotating on the on the on the y, not on the x? Because we want uh, the wool to rotate from the top to, to down, not from left to right. Like from which that? one? From which one? This that is mean okay. we're coming forward. Okay, so this is this is y, right? This is x, correct? So just click this one, you will see. This is the this is the um this is the y. When I click it, it's the y, right? This one is the x, correct? This is the z. So meaning, if I'm going to rotate it in the z, the ball will be doing like this, like that. Okay, it will be doing like that. If I will be um, rotating the ball in the z in the y in the x axis, it will be rotating like this. Okay. So if I will be rotating the ball in X, it will be doing rotation like this. Let me just draw it in the in the in the whiteboard so that you will get what I mean. Let me just uh, copy this. Because it's really difficult to demonstrate everything. That's why uh, being in the classroom is better than <laughs> doing it online, right? Doing classes online is really difficult. Control C. Let me just do it. So this is the ball. Control V, Control V. Let me do three balls, okay? Why cannot do this way? So we have three balls now. Okay, let me just show to you how it works. Okay. Oh, I have four balls here. So
So if I will be doing this, let's say for example, I have a line here, okay? So the red one is the axis, okay? Please look at this, it's the axis. This is Z, right? Right? So this is Z. So the direction of the movement will be here. Okay, because we are rotating it in the Z axis. Okay? So this is the Y. This is the Y. So the rotation of the ball will be like this. Okay? If it's in the X, if this, this is the X axis, right? The rotation of the ball will be here, like this one. This is the rotation of the ball. It will be rotating here. Right? So, if you will see on this uh, example, we want the ball to rotate like this. So, we want to rotate it in the Y axis. That's why we have to rotate it in the Y axis. Clear? So, let's now try to change the value of the rotation of the Y. Okay? Okay, but before that, you have to see to it that your timeline is in the zero position. Okay? You have to see to it your timeline is in the zero position. Let me just go with the timeline here. Okay, let me go with the zero here. Let me go with the zero position. Let me type zero here. I'll go back with the zero. Okay? So the Y, the rotation of the Y should be like this, just the same, okay? So no changes here for the, for the rotation for the initial position, correct? So no rotation for the initial position. So let me just write the step. So you have to... Um, so what's the value of x here? I the y here, the value of y should be 14, right? Based on the calculation. So next, you have to go with this. Move. Move the timeline to zero, okay? So, the timeline to zero, okay, and then um, you can set the rotation, move the timeline to zero, set the rotation of y, um, of x, I mean sorry, of y to zero, okay, and then create a free keyframe, create a keyframe. So we have to um, move this ball. So we're already in the zero, okay, in the zero position. So in this case, let's change the rotation of y to zero. So this one is zero, no need to change it. Right click it and then insert keyframe, okay? We're going to insert a keyframe here. That's it, so you have now a keyframe for the rotation. Let me just specify it in the steps so that you won't forget it when you do it alone. Okay. Go back to the property palette. Palettes, okay. Right click this time. Right click rotation. Then select insert keyframe. Okay? Like this. So like that. So I, I, I put it here already. Then the last step I guess this is the last step I think that we're going to make for this uh, for this one. Lastly, move the timeline to the last one, which is uh, the, the keyframe we did, which is 240, right? Okay. 
set the rotation of y to which one? Which will be the value of y? 14, right? We will set the value of y to 14, meaning when, when, when the animation reaches 240 timeline, the ball already rotated 240. I mean, I mean uh, no, no, 14. It rotated already 14 times. Set the rotation of y to 14. Okay? So, let me just close a parenthesis here. Note. It means that when the ball reaches frame 240, it has already made 14 rotations. Okay? So let me just close it into parentheses so that it won't uh, change the context of the of the par of the sentence or the paragraph. So go back, go back to the properties palette. Then right click rotation. Okay, right click rotation and insert keyframe okay so in this case what we need to do now is to move to 240 you can type 240 or right click here to 240 you will be here now then change the rotation into 14 okay and then right click insert keyframe okay so save your work okay then you can now do the animation part good so 14 so from here we have to create a keyframe insert a keyframe that's it so go back let's see what happens with the animation so the ball now is rolling. Okay, good. Okay, what if we change the size of the ball? That's the next question. Let's say, for example, we change the size of the ball. What happens? Let me just close this. Let me close. Mm, let me open another one. This ball again. Okay, so let me open this. File, save us. Let me save it as in the desktop again. Let me call it. Let me put it in the desktop. Let me call it uh, rotating ball 2. Rotating ball 2. Okay, so let me go with the object mode because I'm from the edit. Okay, so. Let's say, for example, the size of the ball is different this time. Let's say, for example, the ball, the size of the ball is, let's say, for example, it was scaled to, let's say, 4. It's too big, right? Let's make it realistic. Let's say around uh, the ball is 1, let's say 2. Let's say the ball is 2 now. It was changed to 2. So we want to do the same animation. So what we will do? Okay. 
what we will do, let's say for example, say let, let me put this one to negative 10 again, the x position to 10. position is negative 10 it's in there okay let me create a frame here to 0 so let me create a frame insert keyframe then I want again same thing okay same thing I want the X position to be in 4 same distance which is 4 then I'll go to keyframe let's say for example keyframe 90 or just to make it really sick 120 okay I'll make it to 120 okay then I'll get I'll put a keyframe here into 120 so I'll make it the distance of location is 4 so same thing 4 insert a keyframe so let me go with the animation so it's a little bit faster, right? Comparing to the first one, this is a little bit faster. So my question is, how much we will roll the ball in this case? The radius, the dimension is 3.94. So this is close around 4, right? 4 divided by 2. So this is 4 divided by 2. Clear, clear. 4 divided by 2, you will get 2. The radius this time is 2, right? So what's the distance? 10 plus 4, it will be 14, right? So how many rotations are you going to make? You have to remember. 20. Which one? 28. Okay. Let me repeat, okay? Let me repeat. For those who, who missed the discussion earlier, so we scaled the object now into two. So meaning x, the dime, um, the x was uh, scaled to two, y is to two, z is to two, and now the dimension was changed into 3.94, right? So 3.94. So meaning by looking at this in the scale, I could say that the radius is two, right? The radius is 2. It was changed. The radius now is 2. If you will see, as you change the scale, the dimension also changes. So if you will, if you will see just the same thing, you could, you could see, this, um, you could see this, this 2 here, right? Will be our radius automatically. The value of the radius will be 2. So since the distance is 14, same thing. It's 14. What will be now the number of rotation? You have to remember the formula is very simple, right? Distance divided by what? Radius, right? So the distance is 14 divided by the radius now, which is 2. We will get 7. So it has to rotate 7, correct? So in this case, I have to change the data, I mean the, the sets of the units from degrees to radians. Okay? Let me go back with the first, the initial uh, keyframe, which is zero. I'll set the rotation of Y to zero, which is fine here. Right click it, insert keyframe. And then let me go with, which one? This is uh, 120, right? I'll go with 120. At 120 timeline, I'll have to change my Y into 7, right? Is it correct? 7 as, the cal as, as far as the calculation is concerned. So let me right click it and insert a keyframe. So when you go with the animation, I have to see the ball rolling. It is smooth, right? You have to remember if you will if you will commit mistake if you will commit mistakes on the computation of 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 the formula then your ball will be will be doing differently. Okay, it will be behaving differently. But this time it's very smooth, right? Let's try to demonstrate. Let's say for example if if we made mistakes if we made mistakes with the calculation, okay? 
let me just remove the okay the keyframe is the same let me go with the timeline on timeline 120 let me see okay in the timeline 120 let me delete the keyframe okay let's say for example let's make let's make a mistake here let's say let's make it 14 you made the mistake with the calculation okay of the y rotation then let's create a keyframe here so let's see what happens when we animate the object is it realistic wait 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 I'm doing it I'm doing it wrongfully let me just uh, delete the keyframe here this is fine uh, let me go with the 250 no this 120 replace the keyframe here let me just remove the keyframe delete the keyframes okay I'm just go back again here so it's not rotating that's good so let me just change the keyframe let's go back with keyframe 120 Let's make this one to be 14. Let's see the rotation. And let me add a keyframe here. Let's see what happens. What happens? It rotates too much time. Yeah, too much time, right? It's not realistic, the movement. It's not proportional with, with the timeline. So let's say, for example, we made, again, a wrong rotation. Let me go with the timeline 120. We will delete this uh, keyframe here. Let's change it, for example, for too small. Let's make it uh, rotation is 1. OK? Let's see what happens if the rotation is very small. What happens? What happens? Not realistic at all. Not realistic at all, right? So, meaning you have to calculate, you have to calculate this uh, rotation properly based on on the on the on the formula given to you in this discussion. So, for your for your assignment for your hands-on assignment I want you to do something like this okay so show me your output tomorrow if you can't finish it please do it tomorrow I want to see your output so let me just let me just get the ball here okay so using the ball the model that we use, okay, last time. Okay, so I want you to do something like this, okay? Please experiment so that you will know how to uh, how to do properly this. So let me draw my camera so that you will see what I mean. Okay, it's my camera, okay? So I want you to do something like this. The ball is moving, but rolling like this. The one that we did last time in the, in the box. Okay, so I want you to do this, uh, this animation part. So the ball, I want you to move the ball I want you to move while rotating from this point up to this, to this, to this, and to this. Okay? This is your assignment for tomorrow. Okay? I want you to, to do it. 
Okay, so tomorrow you have to show your output to me. You want to see everybody to do it. Okay, this one. So the ball will be rotating to this portion, to this portion, to this portion, and to this portion. What have you noticed? What have you noticed? That huh? we have to rotate the ball in different dimension. Mm -hmm. like very good. X, Y, Z, like that. Yes, very good. Rotation. So you, you have to remember, I'll give you a technique, okay? If the ball is moving is moving in the x axis okay rotate y okay rotate y let me just show you a technique here okay so if the ball is moving along x-axis let me just uh, rephrase it along the x-axis rotate y if it's moving here you are rotating the y right because it's you have to rotate the y if the ball if the ball is moving along the y-axis rotate which one rotate X here it's like this let me show to you how what I mean I'll give you a technique on this so if I am moving here so meaning the ball is rotating here right so I have to rotate it in the X axis right so the ball is rotating this way into the X axis from here to here it's rotating right so my axis is X right if my ball is moving to the X this X axis right so my ball should be rotating in which in which axis it's in the Y right so this is the Y axis right so this is the Y so my ball should be rotating in this way correct so it's very simple right so again if I'm moving to the Y axis then I have to rotate my ball in the X so rotation will be here right so it's not difficult so you can't do it rotation is in this way 